So most patients with the cystus confined clinical stage one seminoma are cured by orchiectomy alone, but uh, 15 to 20% of the patients will relapse without any further treatment. So we know from numerous studies that larger tumor size and vitetestis invasion are associated with an increased risk of relapse and current guidelines define high-risk patients based on tumor size larger than four centimeter and vitetestis invasion. So the problem with current risk stratification relates to the fact that a significant proportion of these so-called high-risk patients uh, will actually not relapse. Um, as shown in recent systematic review and also confirmed in our study, less than 30% of these high-risk patient, patients will actually relapse. And therefore, advocating adjuvant treatment based on these risk factors will result in a large proportion of overtreatment. Um, and furthermore, uh, previous studies have been challenged by variable pathology reporting with a substantial amount of missing data. And also, there is a paucity of data regarding other potential risk factors, such as lymphovascular invasion uh, and local tumor spread into adjacent structures, such as the hyla subtissue of the testicular hilum. Um, and finally, uh, research on, on prognostic factors has suffered from a lack of large unselected study cohorts um, since most so-called high-risk patients have been treated upfront with adjuvant treatment uh, in many centers worldwide. To address these challenges and aiming to improve risk predictions, uh, we therefore assess potential prognostic factors for relapse in a truly unselected population-based setting with centralized pathology review. Um, so in the present study, we included all patients with clinical stage one seminoma proven disease diagnosed in Denmark from 2013 to 2018. And uh, this was possible due to the unique setup we have in Denmark. So all Danish patients with clinical stage one disease have been managed with uh, surveillance for several decades, regardless of the pathological features in the primary tumor. Um, and thus none have been treated with adjuvant therapy. And this of course um, offers a unique opportunity to assess risk factors for relapse. And using the unique uh, Danish registries, including the prospective Danish testicular cancer database initiated in 2013, we could identify and collect uh, all the histological slides from all patients. And from there on, we then performed a pathology review blinded to the clinical outcome. And a, from a medical record review, we obtained clinical data with follow-up until uh, July, 2022. Um, and finally, we then assessed uh, these uh, specified variables and relapsed by use of Cox, Cox regression analysis. Of a total of 924 patients included, 16% uh, relapsed during a median follow-up of 6.3 years. Um, and we found four independent predictors of relapse, which were tumor invasion into the testicular hilum, which consists of reeded testis and the hyla subtissue, lymphovascular invasion, and elevated preorchectomy levels of LDH and beta HCG. And I think that there are several aspects of our findings that are noteworthy and also uh, novel. Um, so first of all, we, we confirmed VDC uh, as a prognostic factors, but we found two invasion into the, into the hyla subtissue as a much stronger predictor, uh, reflecting the more advanced tumor spread. And second, uh, lymphovascular invasion is a well-established uh, prognosticator in stage one non seminomer and now we've established that it's also prognostic in stage one seminoma, which biologically uh, makes sense. And finally, in our study, uh, the prognostic significance of tumor size was superseded by LDH and beta HCG in the multivariable analysis. And this probably ref reflects the fact that accurate assessment of tumor size in seminoma is often challenged by multifocality and intertubular growth. Mm -hmm. 
our model broadly classified uh, the patients into six uh, different risk groups um, with, with uh, relapse probabilities ranging from 6% in patients with no risk factors to 62% in patients with all four risk factors with tumor ex extension into the hilar subtissue of the testicular hilum. And in terms of uh, predictive performance of the model, uh, the optimism corrected health CDEX was um, 0.70 compared to 0.63 using previous risk stratification based on retestis invasion and tumor size larger than four centimeter in our data set. And the calibration plot showed good agreement between uh, the observed and model predicted probabilities of relapse. And furthermore, um, the Kaplan-Meier curves of the different risk groups showed that the model uh, performed well clearly separating um, the different risk groups based on, on the number of risk factors. Um, so although our model is far from perfect, it is clearly it clearly outperformed uh, previous prognostic models. And, and I think it could be extremely uh, interesting to look uh, whether more novel biomarkers like micro RNAs or, or other things can, can improve the model. I think that our findings have uh, several important clinical uh, implications. So, so first, uh, the identified prognostic factors enables providers and patients to make more informed decision about the post orchiectomy management. Um, second, uh, we've now been able to identify a true high risk group of relapse, and this provides opportunities for future studies to clarify how follow up should be planned and whether adjuvant treatment should be offered. Um, and finally, so we are planning on validating our findings in a separate cohort, but, but our data show that patients with zero or one risk factor, which constitutes like 50% of the entire population, they have a very low risk of relapse beyond, beyond the two years after uh, orchiectomy. And actually, it is as low as 0.5% per year after the two years, and, and this could suggest that a less intense follow-up program of this large group of patients with less mobility uh, and cost for the patient, but also for the healthcare system.